Hi guys, so this is how you get your Nexus controller working as a mouse emulator using REWASD. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create a new config. Look up generic alpha. I just choose Xbox One. Just give it a second to load in. Okay, so over here you could just click no, go and edit your config, right away go on switch to expert editing experience, go over to your thumbstick, click from native stick behavior, go to custom stick behavior. And you could add whatever curve you want in here. You could paste it or just wait for later, leave it as linear, that's fine too. Save it. Then on REWSD, click these three lines over here. Click add. Type in whatever game you want it for. I'm just gonna say temp. And the first thing you need to do to get the mouse emulation working, understand that this works as just as any other smart translator does. So you're gonna have to have it work through the right thumbstick. So what you do is you click on any one of these edges, it doesn't matter, you just click on the edge. Don't click on the center because that's the center click. Just click on the edge. First thing I always do is unmap. I, a lot of times, will just unmap the entire controller. Uh, I don't know why they have it already mapped in, the controller buttons are in place, but I just like to unmap everything. Then what you do on the right thumbstick is you click mouse. I turn off global mouse sensitivity and I just turn XY to 100. I find that I get better granular movement that way. Then go to advanced. First thing is vertical axis range and horizontal axis range. Set that to zero. If you leave that on, it's gonna lock your movements in place on an angle. The next thing you want to do is get rid of the dead zone. So if you're just testing this out on the free version, just set it as low as you can. Unfortunately, on the free version, it only goes down to 100. So you don't have, you still have a little bit of a dead zone, which on your motion aim and controller aim, it's going to create a little bit, a little bit of a stall and micro movements. So I recommend if you want to get the full benefit of this, um, getting the paid version. So you're going to want to go to, uh, to get rid of that stalling. You're going to want to go on response, go to custom and set this first point over here to zero, zero. So you can see point one is a zero and zero. Then hit apply. Okay, now I'm going to test it out. Yep, I have mouse emulation working and motion. Okay, then you're gonna go back. Oh, what did it do there? It looks like it did something funky, let me see. Nope, that was just a bug. Okay, the next thing I like to do is on WASD. So over here on your movement keys. Uh, note that some games will have movement working on the thumbsticks. Like Battlefield 2042 has it working on, you could use the thumbstick and the mouse aim at the same time. Most games though, you're gonna have to do obviously unmap and then you're gonna have to do WASD. And what I like to do after that is I go under advanced. Personally, I like to keep the vertical and horizontal axis range just to make it consistent. I keep them all about the same. So I just move it up a little bit. So the 45s are the same as the um, moving 0, 90. Um, what's the next thing that I do? Oh yeah, under, now this is going to make it feel a lot more like an analog. So under your high movements, that's, um, when you deflect your stick a certain amount. So uh, when you deflect your stick high, I sometimes like to bind that depending on the game, depending on the game, I like to bind it to shift for sprint. So on stick high, you could bind that to shift or whichever key is your sprint key. Uh, make sure on in, in the game that you have a uh, sprint on hold as well, rather than toggle. And then the next thing I like to do, same thing under low, if your game has a walk button, 
which most games do. Let's say on on Valorant it's actually Shift, but on certain games it's C or Alt. So let's just say it's Alt for Walk. So that would be under your low movement. So under this deflection, it would be your walk. This would just be normal movements, and this would be sprint. A lot of times I like to drag that a little bit out. And I like to do something a bit like that on most games. So you could tune that just how you like it, even the dead zone, everything. Back, and then everything else, just bind it the way you want it. Just whatever you do. So let's say A would probably be jump, which is space and unmap it and every button i recommend unmapping it there's a lot of other cool tools too so certain games will have a lot of bindings on it and everything so you might want to have it that you hold like valorant to drop an item i have so the center click i have that um as my knife button and under uh holding it so if i hold the knife button for a certain amount of time it'll just drop an item instead so let's say if i have on valorant i have the spike I could select the spike and then I'll just hold this button and it'll drop it. So sometimes you're going to have to be creative if a game is not designed for controllers like Valorant and has a lot of key bindings. You're going to have to be creative and some of them you're going to have to do the double tap. Some of them you might want to do it that you hold for it. So just get creative like that. There's also another a lot of other cool features on REWSD. So you could, uh, under certain zones on the trigger pool, you could have it, for example, uh, I have it on Call of Duty and games that you could hold breath while sniping. I have it on the high hold. I'll have that shift or, um, yeah, the hold breath button on this one. And yeah, same thing with these. You just unmap and have that as mouse right. That would actually be your mouse left button to make it work the same. So mouse left button. So that's that one would be uh, fire. All right, I hope that helps you guys out. If you have any questions, just leave it down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you.